Some surprising news came out this week. Hershen Family Entertainment is now the majority partner and operator of Kentucky Kingdom in Louisville. Ed Hart and his investment group saved this park through a multi-year effort between 2010 and 2014 and made it thrive again. But this change in ownership will bring drastic changes. A lot of them will be good, but I also have my concerns. Thanks to Ryan Beloso for throwing this idea out there. These are the pros and cons of Kentucky Kingdom being handed over to Hershey. Rather than switching off between the pros and cons, let's just lay them all out at once. Starting with the pros. Craig Ross is taking over as Kentucky Kingdom's general manager. If you don't know him, he's been Dollywood's president over the last decade, and that's a well-respected part from top to bottom. Even with all the problems they've had with Lightning Rod, at least give them credit for taking a chance on something that expensive and innovative. Hershend also brings a lot of capital to the table, a lot more than the current owners were capable of. They indicated that one of the things they want to do is reach out to the community for suggestions on future attractions, as well as shows and events. And they already took notice of people's request to bring Dollywood's famous cinnamon bread to the park. That would be amazing. Hershen is going to try and expand the reach of the park by working with local tourism agencies to encourage travel to the park. They already said that they want to appeal to multi-generational families, introduce new programs and events, and expand the calendar to bring people in more throughout the year. All this tells me is that Hershen understands that the parks that make the most money are the ones that appeal to families. Dollywood and Silver Dollar City also have events and attractions that appeal to older people. Roller coasters and water slides appeal to teenagers, who spend the least amount of money while they're in the park. By promoting different events throughout the year, they're also giving people a reason to come back several times a year, and this encourages people to buy a season pass. It's a brilliant business model, and I don't know why more parks aren't as aggressive with it, usually sticking to Halloween and winter events. Hershend operates 25 properties, and their biggest and most prominent by far is Silver Dollar City in Dollywood. These are a pair of universally loved and respected parks, combining theming, atmosphere, friendliness, and some of the best roller coasters in the world. Hershend has been breaking the bank over the last decade for these two parks, most recently adding a brand new area to Dollywood called Wildwood Grove and Mystic River Falls to Silver Dollar City. This is promising, but let's turn this around a little bit and look at some of the cons of the sale. I admit that I'm speculating a little bit, so call this a concern more than a con. There's a park in Valdosta, Georgia called Wild Adventures, a park that Hershen has operated since 2007. Since taking over, they added one relocated coaster and have since sold that to Funspot Kissimmee. Kentucky Kingdom looks a lot more like Wild Adventures than it looks like Dollywood or Silver Dollar City. Hershen may have a lot of capital, but will they see the need to invest in Kentucky Kingdom? They may have a plan up front to get a different crowd into the park, but down the line, what does the future hold? We knew what Ed Hart was gonna do. We were getting a new coaster every two to three years. Lightning Run, Storm Chaser, Kentucky Flyer, and then the T4 project that looked like an RMC Raptor, and that's apparently off the table now. Even if Hershen did decide to invest in new coasters for the park, would they really be that much better than what Ed Hart was adding? We're not talking about a huge park like Six Flags Magic Mountain, being held back by Six Flags cheap business model. Kentucky Kingdom is right next to an airport, so they have some restrictions, plus some land limitations, plus the Kentucky State Fair board to run everything by. And it seemed like the park was hitting a home run with every new coaster that they were adding. So this seems like a lateral move at best. And there's only one way to go when it comes to adding new coasters, down. In my Keys to the Kingdom video, I said that this was the most enthusiast-friendly park. That event was proof enough. Their social media team had a lot of fun. And I'm not sure if that will continue, since Hershen seems to take more of a buttoned up approach. I'm afraid that we could be losing something in the theme park world that was truly one of a kind. Ed Hart and his team had an amazing personal touch with this park, and you could tell he really cares about it. He's been involved in it for decades, and even if Hershen implements a lot of positive changes for the long-term health of the park, we're losing a lot with Ed Hart stepping aside. The plan to sell the park apparently goes back a couple years, and it wasn't just a reaction following a bad 2020, where attendance was down 20% of normal levels. That being said, I don't think their plan was to sell it at this point, since they filed those plans for an RMC Raptor, and that wouldn't have made sense if they weren't planning on seeing it through. In terms of dollars, there apparently was a base price for the sale, but the final sale price won't be determined until three years down the road, and it'll be based on the park's profitability. And while we're talking about money, what's gonna happen with admission prices? Dollywood and Silver Dollar City will run you about $75, 
which is about as high as it gets outside of Universal and Disney. Wild Adventures had a $49 adult price as of a couple years ago, and I check Kentucky Kingdom's 2019 adult price, which was also $49 for in-state residents. Out-of-state guests could get in for two days, plus free drinks, for $40. If Hershen decides to keep the same price, does that mean they'll treat the park like Wild Adventures? Or will their new investment spur a higher ticket price? We'll find out. We do know that any 2021 passes already purchased will be honored. Let me know what you think about the sale. Do you think this is an overall positive or negative and why? Your opinion may really depend on what you're looking for in the park. For a more all around experience, this is probably a good thing. But if you are looking to this park to keep adding thrilling coasters, I wouldn't be so optimistic. Before you go, be sure to drop this video a like and give me a sub if you haven't already done so. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.